Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. I'm going to show you some things that you need to make sure you set properly in the driver when you're using something as sophisticated as a Canon IPF Pro 1000. There are a lot of little tricks that you can assign if you wish to do so that will improve matters and may actually prevent some weird problems from occurring. So let's go ahead and jump over to the screen and I'll show you what I am talking about. All right, we are at the Windows 10 screen right here. And a lot of you may not know that if you just simply go down here to the lower left corner and just type in, in this case, we're going to type in control. We want to find our control panel. I already have an icon right here for it, but many of you will have this set in this manner. This is the default setting. So where do I find my devices and printers? Um, I have no clue where it might be. So what I do most of the time is I either set large icons or small icons. In this case, this is what I use. It is, takes a little bit less room for me here on my very small 24 inch screen. A lot of you guys have humongous screens nowadays. So we'll go ahead and go to devices and printers. Activate that. We're going to open it up big. You see all my printers. Some of them are not even turned on right now. We're going to right click on the pro 1000 remember you have to arrive at this window this is devices and printers locate your printer in this case the pro 1000 right click and printing preferences at this point now we can just go ahead and close the control panel as we discussed numerous times and this is something that everybody needs to just just memorize so that it becomes second nature if you're printing letting the driver control color you click on this color intensity manual adjustment box this will open up click on matching and if you are going to print through your driver with a canon paper that only works with canon paper such as photo paper pro luster in this case or any of the other papers available in the drop down menu you must choose icm so matching icm and what that will do is allow the auto setting here to match that paper to the correct ICC profile for that paper. Okay, so basically you're printing automatically through a color managed workflow by using the driver. Choose your rendering intent for imaging. We use perceptual or relative color metric. I like to use relative. That is my default. Hit apply and you're good to go. Now, here is something that a lot of people make a mistake and kind of regret it at the end and it sort of creates a weird um, magenta cast on your prints especially on a mac driver yes i'm sorry mac users but this happens all the time with people trying to print on a canon printer using a mac computer and of course a mac driver for that particular canon printer will do this weird color cast uh, we don't want that color cast. We want neutrality. Never, ever click on this preview before printing. Guys, do not do that. Leave that blank. Okay. I just solved the problem for someone by telling them to undo that. And that solved the problem. No more magenta cast. All right. Don't ask me why it occurs. It should not occur. It should never be the case. But indeed, it seems to be. Now, I don't know about printing on a Windows machine, whether that would occur. Maybe I will try it someday. But at this point, I am enjoying my very neutral prints, so I don't even want to mess with it. The term, if it's not broken, don't mess with it, right? Or if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I think is the correct term. Yeah, that applies perfectly. Let's go over to the main tab. So here, basically, it just kind of repeats the other settings. So you have highest quality, Photo Paper Pro Luster. We can click here and just let's just see what that provides us. Drying time. Isn't that amazing? You can actually add drying time. So if you have a type of paper that may be a bit more absorbent, let's just say, then you might want to allow it to sit and not be ejected out of the printer until it has reached a certain number of minutes drying time. This is where you fix your print head height. If you have a thicker paper and you neglect it to feed it through the manual feeder in the back of the printer so that it passes through a straighter feed path. In other words, it doesn't have to bend as it would if you feed it from the top feeder or what they call the rear feeder. Very confusing, by the way. 
choose avoid paper abrasion. That will increase the gap between the printhead and the paper. You're less likely to introduce what we call head strikes. Basically, the bottom of the printhead, the nozzle plate itself, literally touches the paper surface and it will just leave gunk and marks and things that are not at all connected to the image, okay? It'll just be a lot of smudges. So you want to activate that if you are indeed experiencing any of these problems. Paper vacuum. The printer offers assisted vacuum advance for paper. And what that does, it sort of keeps the paper flatter than it normally would have. It's not a super powerful vacuum. So do not expect a curly heavy paper to be you know, immediately suck flat. No, it will not happen. It's not that high end of a printer for to be able to do that. So this is just assisted. So I usually leave mine on. Yeah, it has a little bit of noise as it's printing, but you know, that's something you can live with. And it will ensure that most papers, that is, uh, most flexible papers will be kept nice and flat. Now, you can always end up getting a head strike, especially on the leading edge. In other words, that corner of the paper where the printhead first enters, if it's raised up even the slightest amount, it will hit the printhead. This happens on any printer, okay? Not just the Canon Pro 1000 or any other Canon printer for that matter. All brands will have that at some point in time. They will suffer from head strikes. Your prints will suffer from head strikes due to a corner of that leading edge raising up a little tiny bit. Once the paper begins to feed and that front edge passes through the platen, then that problem is gone. It only occurs at the very beginning and also sometimes at the very end of a print job. That's why it is recommended that you just simply never choose borderless because you're trying to then print edge to edge. You're trying to print over every square inch of that paper. No, we don't want that. I like to add a border so that front edge is already under the plate before the printhead begins to print. There's nothing sticking up, okay? Nothing. I never get a head strike, never ever, because I always add a border. All right, so that's that part. We're gonna go ahead and get out of there. Calibration value, printer default. So what is this? So printer default means that the printer will just print out of the box at whatever calibration setting it is set at. Now, if you do the internal calibration, and for instance, you use Pro Luster paper to do that, then you can actually tell it to use that value. In other words, it's going to apply that internal calibration. And I've done that, so I'll go ahead and choose that in this case. So now the printer is going to use the results of that internal calibration to apply a slight correction. Maybe the printer was not outputting as perfectly as the factory theoretical condition stated. So now it is because I did that internal calibration, but I can just tell it to ignore that or tell it to use that value. And so you have to choose that if you want to use that internal calibration. Why did you do it? Of course, of course you want to use it. So again, we said manual, print quality, highest, and we're using color intensity adjustment. We're not setting it to auto. You could set it right here to auto if you want to. You don't have to go through that whole rigmarole. If you want to print a color image, not a black and white image, not something that you already converted, but a color image to black and white, you can use black and white photo print and it'll just simply print it in neutral tones, in other words. Or you can also print a converted image. You already know what it looks like, especially a converted image to black and white or so-called monochrome that you may have added a tone to. In other words, it may be a brownish sepia tone. You would then also choose that. And then that will take you through a different process. It does not use an ICC profile. It just simply uses your black and gray inks and a bit of the other colors to help neutralize linearly neutralize the results. Again, as I said, stay away from that one, please. Don't use it. Apply page setup. Now here is where it gets a little bit tricky. And some people have a lot of problems with, hey, I just set up this image in my layout and it fits perfectly on a, you know, eight and a half by 11. And then when I print it is a different size image and it's off to one corner or something. All right. Yes, we have seen that before, haven't we? Make sure See that right here, same as paper size. Printer paper size, same as paper size. And then this is the page size. Page size has nothing to do with paper size, folks, okay? Let me say that again. Page size has nothing to do with 
printer paper size. So basically page size, it just means the size of your layout that you create in something like Photoshop. Doesn't have any relationship to what size paper you print it on. So keep that in mind. Here you can rotate 180 degrees. You can go to landscape. You can do lots, all sorts of orientation settings here. You can choose, even though you can do it here as well, you can choose borderless here if you wish. Normal size would mean as you see it. Borderless would mean exactly what it says. You have selected borderless printing. The document to be printed is enlarged so that it slightly extends off the paper. Print quality may deteriorate. People never get that far in this warning when they read it. Print quality may deteriorate. Why would you ever want that? Or, or you know, take a chance. You're spinning a roulette wheel, taking a chance. Yes, it may be okay, but it may not. You may have some scuff marks on the leading and trailing edge. The paper may actually even shift angle because it has nothing holding it down. Remember, it has to print from the front edge, side edges, and all the way to the trailing edge. At that point, there's nothing holding down the paper, okay? It could indeed shift. Or the sheet may be stained at the top and bottom, depending on the type of media used. When he says top and bottom, that means leading and trailing edges. So, you know, consider that. If you really have to have borderless, go ahead and print it the size you want it to be onto a larger piece of paper, center it, and then trim the edges off. That's what I would do. And that would ensure that I get a perfect print without any kind of damage or any kind of uh, artifacts due to that borderless printing procedure. And mechanically, the way the printer handles it, it just cannot guarantee a perfect result every time. Absolutely not. All right, here you control, for those of you who still insist on printing borderless, the amount of expansion. In other words, the image expansion has to take place because you might end up with a sliver of a white border on one of the edges because paper positioning is always going to be slightly different. Every time you load a sheet of paper, it's never going to be placed in the exact, you know, by the, by the last micron of accuracy position. It's not going to happen. So you need to give it a margin of error and that's your expansion amount. So if you're getting a little bit of a white border consistently, maybe on the left and the right, or maybe the bottom, maybe the top, then I would suggest you increase the amount of extension or enlargement. I mean, now be aware that that's going to crop your image. For those of you who crop that accurately, you cannot print borderless. Absolutely not. If you're cropping your image to that exact mode, I, I, I'm not going to say dimension because you crop according to what the image demands. You want to take out something that's a little bit distracting off of one edge, you crop that off. Okay, now, if you try to print that borderless, it's going to expand it so that there are no white borders. Get it? So your top and bottom may be expanded 10%. Your right and left may be expanded 5%. But it needs to go beyond the edges and you're going to lose that crop that you so carefully prepared when you were editing. So keep that in mind. Fit to paper. That's exactly what that means. It's just it's going to fit it regardless. Regardless of your image ratio it's going to fit it to that paper. And then these other ones here, I don't even mess with. This is for you to actually scale by percentage points your image within that particular paper you're using now. Notice what is now activated here. If you have this, in other words, you created an image in Photoshop, a layout, whatever. It might be a piece of graphic art and your original document happened to be at an eight and a half by 11. You can print it to an eight and a half by 11 or any other size. It's going to take that and fit it. But it's, you know what it's going to do? It's going to fit it to the corner. If you make that error of having a different paper size than your input size, it's going to do that. And that's something a lot of people make that mistake on and they find out and they're going nuts. They have no clue what's happening. Okay, they have no clue. Notice the icon here, scaled. You see that? So it's going to start at the upper corner, upper left. In this case, it will be, that's the leading edge. That's the trailing edge. And it's going to, as you scale it larger and larger, it's going to fill in that larger output paper. Again, please be careful with that. Don't mess with this too much. Unless you're a layout artist and you're doing a lot of graphic work, you're doing a lot of uh, printing that requires that sort of a precise location of an image onto the final paper, the output paper size. Page layout, you can do double layout like that. This is actually if you're printing a booklet, titling and poster type work. Yeah, we don't do any of that stuff. So 
we will just stay with the normal size. Okay, so that'll give you the, you know, what you what you feed it is what you're going to get. In other words, stapling, margins, this is for people that make uh, booklets and that type of thing. Now, let's go back here because this is very important with the Pro 1000. So we discussed never click on that preview before printing. We're going to go back here to the color intensity manual adjustment. We're going to, instead of hitting matching, which, you know, we already know is set to allow the driver to control color, we're going to go here to clear coating. And what is this? This is a chroma optimizer. And when would you want to mess with this? Well, let me give you a scenario and I'm going to go back to me to show you that. All right. So here I have a photo of that beta fish and I'm going to rotate it so that you see the reflection on there and notice that that reflection is even, terribly even. I mean, perfectly. Okay. There are no areas with more gloss than others. In other words, what happens, and I'll go back in a little bit. There are two choices that you can make. You can set it for auto application or full or overall. What do each one of those mean? Auto means that areas that have ink will receive Chrome Optimizer. So if there was any areas here that were pure, in other words, pure white, just a paper base, no ink was applied, those areas would not receive any Chrome Optimizer. Neither would the border. The border did not receive ink, so it would not receive Chrome Optimizer. There would be a difference in gloss. This would look like the image itself was five times glossier than the paper because Pro Luster is not really that glossy. So when you apply Chroma Optimizer and you apply it locally as the auto setting will force the driver to do, it depends on the density of ink that parts of the image contain. That will then tell the driver to apply more or less Chrome Optimizer. You'll get this very, very distracting gloss differential going on. Okay, they don't tell you that. They just tell you to use that because they feel that you want to maybe economize the use of Chrome Optimizer. Well, uh, this is a situation where I just say tough luck. You're going to have to go through four times the amount of Chrome Optimizer compared to any other color, okay? And the reason I say that is because I want you guys to use full application so you get a very even, homogenous look to your images. Or people are going to say, oh, that kind of looks inkjet printed. Yeah, they will say that because different inks, okay? In this case, a lot of black was used. Black is really, really glossy. Photo black ink is really, really glossy. Magenta is not so glossy. Okay, there's a difference in gloss coefficient, whatever you want to call it, in the different colors of inks. And this happens with any brand. I don't care who it is. So by applying this overall coating of Chroma Optimizer, you eliminate the difference that is created by, for instance, cyan and blue. They have a different gloss level than magenta and red, okay, and yellow. So you need to then equalize everything fully so that the gloss aspect of the print doesn't become something distractive to the viewer. We want the viewer to immerse themselves into the image itself and not be distracted in any way, shape or form by some other insignificant, you know, thing like gloss differential. It's so easy to take care of that problem by applying full. And the way we do that simply is to go back to the screen auto overall boom okay and apply and we are done that is it that's what you have to do now let's go look again i i, I want to show you a couple of more things that are important within that particular driver i'm going to enter the driver preferences once again let's go over to maintenance so here you have a lot of different icons that you can actually explore to see what is it that they do. So let's just say, for instance, if I created a custom paper configuration or media configuration as it is officially called by using the media configuration tool that is available for the Pro 1000, you can actually take a paper and you run it through a series of tests to determine the thickness, the density requirements, and many other parameters so that you no longer have to just choose a similar paper choice here. 
So in other words, if I was using another brand paper and it just happens to have a luster surface, I don't have to use Photo Paper Pro Luster anymore. I create a custom profile. And once you save those, they are available down here, as you can see. Once you create a custom configuration for media, then you can just save it so that you no longer have to use the recommended media choice. Like in this case, Pro Luster, it may be another paper from another manufacturer that just happens to have a lustrous type surface. Well, once you create a custom media configuration, you can save it here. And I've done that with several papers. And as you can see, this will load that particular name. Okay, you're no longer trying to match luster with some other paper like a San Gabriel Burrita. Okay, you, you know, it's no longer necessary. When I load this, it's going to load parameters. You see that? It's going to tell me that I need to use the manual feeder because that paper requires that. So again, look at that. Manual feed is loaded in, let me see here. It should be set to none. And now I'm ready to print with that paper. It will allow me to choose whatever setting I want for quality. That is printing resolution. I must use the manual feeder because it is a thick paper and it already knows how thick it is. It already knows how much ink density it requires to produce a black to white ramp that does not have too much ink at the dark side and enough ink at the highlight side to make sure that I have a complete range of tones from the darkest to the brightest. So this is all done in the media configuration tool. And again, it's one of the huge advantages of having a Pro 1000. It allows you to do that. All right, let's go back to maintenance. So once you create that so-called media configuration, you update it here. Update media information. That's going to update any kind of the new media configurations that you created. It's going to send them over to the printer, the printer's internal memory, okay, which is awesome. Now, here you have an online printing resources. You can actually access all sorts of things. Also, as you see profiles for some of the higher end papers out there, like Hannah Mule. Let's go ahead and explore that. It's going to take you over to the Canon website. Here's the Pro 1000, 2000, 4000, and Pro 6000. Go to the menu and lots of things that you can access here. And um, yeah, a lot of good information and something that a lot of people don't even access. And it's right there for you guys. The nozzle check, the famous nozzle check. You can print a check pattern. It is different than the normal Canon nozzle check. It's actually more exact and allows you to determine whether you have a problem or not a lot easier. Now, cleaning cycles that you perform manually. If you happen to have a problem with, for instance, yellow, then do not do all colors. Click on group three, which contains blue, yellow, magenta, and photo cyan. Don't waste those other colors. This will isolate the perch unit to only affect these four colors. So yeah, you're wasting ink on the other three, but you're not wasting ink on all 12, in other words. So that is something to keep in mind. Make sure you always do that. Never, ever, ever do a global all colors unless it is necessary. You may have a problem with a color that lives in each one of the three zones, and yeah, you will have to do a complete cleaning cycle. But the Pro 1000 does so many cleaning cycles anyway, it's hardly ever going to have a problem with any kind of uh, clogging problems. All right, power off. Turn the printer off. This literally will power off the printer for you from your computer. Auto power. So this is something that I recommend everyone does. Disable it. Disable everything about it. You don't want that, that printer to ever go off, uh, go to sleep or anything like that. It will just increase the size and volume of ink that is used on the subsequent cleaning cycle it would perform when it comes back to life. Quiet settings. This is kind of interesting. And I always use quiet mode. Simply all it does is this. And you can actually set it for specific hours of the day. I really don't care. There's no one down here with me. But do I care about the noise it makes? No, that's not the reason I set it to quiet mode. Quiet mode allows the printer to print a little bit slower. Okay, it actually pauses a bit as the head traverses to the left, a pause. Returns back to the right, another pause. Paper is advanced. And again, another cycle repeats itself. What am I doing? I'm running the print head a little bit slower less heat is generated and theoretically the less heat you generate the longer the life of the printhead will be okay 
Heat is what destroys a thermal base printhead, like those using Pro 1000s and every other Canon printer, by the way. And other, other manufacturers also use the thermal printhead technology. So keep that in mind. All right, on the last section here, custom settings, I'm going to click on that. Do not detect mismatch of paper settings when printing from computer. So what does that mean? Then I'm going to show you a very, very important one. All right, what that means is that on the LCD, I could set a paper size. And if I don't match that paper size on my drivers, it will then say, hey, you have a mismatch. Well, you know, I don't want to have to constantly change those. So you disable that, okay? In other words, don't stop me every time I want to print on letter size, but I have 13 by 19 or A3 plus picked on my LCD screen. That's all that means. All right, and I'm going to show you the most important one as far as I'm concerned. We're going to go back to the page setup. We're going to go to print options. Ah, here are some choices, many choices that we can actually disable. And I only disable one of them. And that one is located at the very bottom right here. Cancel the safety margin regulation for paper size. What does that mean? Well, let me go over to my full face shot and then we'll come back and read this, okay? What happens when you print on fine art setting? It forces you to use the, what? The manual feeder, okay? And once you activate that through fine art settings, like I showed you earlier when I picked one of my, my custom papers, it told me I had to use the manual feeder. Well, that's going to introduce a, a mandatory 30 to 35 millimeter border leading and trailing edges. Remember, it wants to avoid any kind of problems with that leading edge, maybe the corner getting struck by the printhead. So it's going to tell you, advance the paper, 35 millimeters, before you can then begin to print. That means that the edge of the paper is now under the platen. No more problems with head strikes. Well, you can disable that. Okay, you can actually now print through the manual feeder using fine art mode and have a quarter inch border all around if you wish. You no longer have to have that customary or mandatory 30 through 35, I believe it is, millimeter border. All right, let's go back to the screen. Okay, this setting cancels the safety margin regulation for paper size. When you cancel the regulation and print with matte photo paper or photo paper pro premium matte, you can print with all paper sizes. You will also be able to print with a wider print area and use the borderless printing setting, I think is what they meant. This has been translated, you know, folks. However, depending on the environment, when you print with paper size that does not have wide margins, conditions such as paper abrasion may cause paper stains or deterioration of the print quality. Printing with a paper size that is that has wide margins is recommended. So that's, you know, that's basically what I said earlier. A border will save the paper from being struck by the printhead because it's trying to print at the very, very edge. So yeah, you're still taking a chance, of course. Of course, you're actually disabling that and the paper will not have advanced enough forward to be under the platen. Okay, the platen is that metal strip that runs from right to left when you look internally into your printer. Okay, that's what actually holds the paper down. So once you get past those little rollers, you're good to go, no more head strikes. But if you try to print prior to that, yeah, the paper could be curled slightly. That is what is preventing you from doing. And so do you want that or not? Well, I, I do want that in most cases, but sometimes I just don't want that huge wide border. So I will go ahead and disable that particular setting. That is it for now. I hope you guys understood that there are a lot of hidden settings within that driver. I didn't even do all of them yet. There's a lot more that I could cover. But again, we'll leave that for further videos because I don't want to bore you guys to death. All right. So thank you so much again. If you have any questions, you know where to put them. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing. Bye-bye.